Okay, we're back. We're live with our flagship energy show. It's Hawaii, the state of clean energy, and you can tune in every single Wednesday at 4 p.m. and see amazing things about energy. You need to study energy. You need to know about energy. And do not watch Michael Moore's film, Planet of the Humans, because that is disinformation. <laughs> Mitch Ewan, you want to say hello? Hey, aloha, everybody, from beautiful and lovely Kaneohe Bay overlooking Coconut Island. <laughs> if I had to Gil guess, formerly, formerly known as Gilligan's Island. Ah, uh, perfect. Yeah. If I had to guess, Peter, I'd guess you're in the same place. That's Peter Russick, spokesman for Hawaiian Electric. Hi there. I'm in downtown Honolulu overlooking uh, Coconut Island. So. <laughs> Miracles of television. <laughs> it's a perception thing. Yeah, right. So, so we want to talk about energy because we have to stay educated about energy, even in, sure. especially in the time of COVID. Um, because, you know, relentlessly, climate change proceeds. Relentlessly, we need to keep up with our initiatives. We need to move ahead. And I must say, Peter, that, uh, you know, from all the little segments and clips we've had with you and other people from Hawaiian Electric, you are, you're, you continue to move ahead. Everybody is still focused on that. You, you haven't lost your direction uh, or your, uh, you know, commitment to the initiative. Um, and that's you know, one of the reasons, aside from your smiling face, that we wanted to see you here today. <laughs> there was a piece in, uh, I think it was Civil Beat, or was it in the Star Advertiser today? And it was about some new projects, uh, 16 right. new projects. That's a, kind of a big number. Can you talk about exactly. it? Sure. Well, you may remember, uh, this is actually the second phase of, what, of this effort to increase the amount of renewable energy on our system. We're at about 28% and we are all, we're confident of being at 30% by the end of this year, but we still have a long way to go to get to 100% by 2045. And in particular, we've got some, uh, some power plants, some uh, fossil fuel generation that will be closing up in the next couple of years. Uh, the AES plant here, the Kahului power plant on Maui, uh, Big Island has needs uh, that you know are very uh, volatile because of their uh, their volatile geographic situation. So uh, we've gone ahead with the second phase of this uh, request for proposals. Uh, we put it out um, some uh, eight or nine months ago now, I guess, and we got about seventy five responses, which was pretty good. We're looking we were looking for a, a large, uh, the largest ever. Uh, tranche of new of new projects and of, of megawatt hours of generation and also storage, which is becoming increasingly important. So in the first phase, as you remember, we had about eight projects across the islands, uh, 260 megawatts, and um, those are proceeding now. And and uh, you know some are under construction, some are still uh, in the planning stages, but those are in the bag. And although we fear there may be some slowdowns due to the virus, we think they're basically uh, on schedule. So we put out a request for a second phase, very aggressive. Uh, we wanted to really see what the market would bear. And we got back these 75 proposals. We've got them down to about 16, which are the best. Uh, some of them are really just, you know, kind of waste of time, but some of them are very good, except they were very expensive. And uh, we are still, you know, one of our priorities is still price. We are not going to pay any amount of money for renewable energy at this stage. We're going to wait, hope those prices come down as they have for solar and uh, for wind. So the result of this uh, effort was we've got 16 projects across the three islands. Uh, they are all story, all solar and storage. And a few of them are what we call standalone storage. In other words, um, there are people uh, who want to build a, basically a big battery that uh, will, it really looks like a bunch of, of, uh, of mats and containers, but um, it is uh, working together. It's a big battery. And during the day, we can, we can use the excess renewable energy from these many solar plants, or we can use regular generation if we have it. Uh, in excess and we can charge up those batteries. And then starting at about four or five in the afternoon, we can unload those batteries. They have about four hours of, of, uh, of use and go a little slower. And that way we take this renewable energy from the middle of the day to the afternoon and evening. Well, I mean, uh, you know, that's, that's impressive. 
Um, and I know from the newspaper articles on your press release, you, you're not in a position yet to tell us exactly who or where. Um, exactly but, right. And I know that's causing some heartburn. And uh, uh, it's understandable. We're kind of in a, between a rock and a hard place here. We want to tell people about this, but we don't necessarily want people to wake up, uh, you know, in the morning and pick up their star advertiser and say, oh, you know, there's going to be a big solar project outside your window and nobody ever told you about it. That's a bad way to start that process. Yeah. So we have, we've given each of these developers who we have put onto the short list 30 days uh, to go out to their respective communities. Some are already making announcements. Um, some are still trying to get organized. And, you know, they're, this is particularly difficult right now. In, the, in normal times, uh, some of these developers would be here in the islands talking to people, uh, you know, scoping out the communities around where they want to build and so forth. That's not happening. They're not able to travel. Uh, they're not willing to travel because they want to be at home with their families and so forth. So it's a, a double bind in that respect, and it's very difficult. But uh, we have we said, you know, 30 days from now, we'll release a list of the names of the projects, where they are, how big they are, and so forth. And in the meanwhile, we are really hoping that these developers will get out there. And some of them already have made some announcements and made some contacts. Others are a little slower. But you know, it'll be 30 days from now, and then we'll have the complete list out there. Meanwhile, we're beginning the negotiation process. We have to negotiate the final, uh, what we call the purchase power agreement, and those will go to the Public Utilities Commission, and the comments of the neighbors will also be included in those when they ultimately get to the, the Public Utilities Commission. So, you know, people will be heard. And uh, we've got a, a, you know, everybody in Hawaii knows there's increasing sensitivity about big projects, uh, whether it's because they're near residential areas or because they're on agricultural land or because uh, some small group of people say these are sacred sites. Uh, you know, it, we, we've got to, we're, we recognize that, we're, we've got to respond to that and trying to get the word out, explain to the communities what's going on. And, well, you know, no, I, and I, I just feel how quickly we have forgotten. We, we as a community have forgotten our original intention of the matter was to deal with climate change, to deal with carbon, uh, to go renewable and um, to do everything we can possibly do uh, to get where we need to go. It's, uh, it's critical for mm, our role in the world and, and our reputation. And I, well, I do reputation. not understand, well, I say reputation, I mean our reputation as a renewable energy state. Right. You know, I think we've always been willing to have uh, renewable projects in our uh, somebody else's backyard, and you know, if if it, uh, we're always willing to uh, you know do it if it's not in our line of sight and so forth. Now we're getting to the point, frankly, where there you know these projects in size and scope and location are are. Uh, no longer invisible. And, and I don't blame anybody for saying, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about what happens in my neighborhood. I'm concerned about what's going to be here. I, I moved in here when that, that was an empty field. But you're right. Ultimately, if we're going to get to 100% renewable energy uh, or, or even close, we're going to ha all have to be looking at things that we never saw before. Okay. And look you don't, you don't have to go. comment on this, but, but I would like to express a view on it. Um, my view on it is it's not constructive. Thomas Jefferson said, make yourself useful. That means make yourself useful to the community. And anybody who wants to stop a project that's obviously for a good purpose, that's um, you know, important to our community and, and to everyone in our community and beyond our community is really standing in the way. Um, and he should reconsider or she should reconsider that view. I think it's time already where we began thinking that way, especially in light of COVID, where it's a pull together or we hang together, uh, one or the other. So uh, I'd like to ask you, Mitch, how do you feel about this? You know, the NIMBY thing is old already. People have got to stop doing that, huh? Yeah, yeah, I, totally I don't agree. agree. Well, I don't agree. I'm sorry. Can I, can I go ahead, Mitch? I'll, I'll jump well, in. Uh, no, you finish your, uh, you finish your thought. You know, it, it's, I don't think it's old. I think it, it doesn't really uh, come into play until it's something that really begins to impact you personally. And I don't personally think uh, somebody being concerned about what's happening in their neighborhood is a bad thing. I think 
Uh, and I do think that sometimes community people can come in and say, well, what about if you did it this way? Or what if we, you know, are there changes that could be made? Or, you know, what if it's a little small? You know, they, I think people of good faith now, people of good intent, uh, ought to be informed what's going on. They ought to be listened to. And if we can do, if the developer or, or Hawaiian Electric can deal with the concerns and still not abandon the project, I think that's a good thing. I think the people who come in and say, no way, not in my neighborhood, definitely not here, do it somewhere else, send it to Waianae or, you know, out on the, some other island and so forth, that's not productive and that's not constructive. I don't think it's fair to the well-intentioned people among us, and I still think uh, there are a lot of those people who, who want to know what's going to happen in their neighborhood, how it's going to affect their homes, their property values and so forth, and to say, well, you know, what are the impacts going to be and are there some ways that we can, uh, you know, make those impacts less or make them a little more tolerable? I don't have a problem with that. I think the problem that we have encountered in some of these projects is a kind of a no negotiation, absolutely not, uh, you, you know, you're violating some sacred trust or something. Uh, that's when I, I begin to have a personal problem with it. So Hawaiian Electric is committed to this community outreach. We are insisting that our developers do that. We're in, you know, I'll tell you one other thing. We have some projects of our own. For the first time in this process, we can do what we at Hawaiian Electric call self-build. In other words, we propose projects and the, it was, it was uh, separated. There was a wall between our people doing the proposing and the people doing the evaluating. And the, there was an independent observer who was watching to make sure we didn't get any preferential treatment. We put in about four projects. Two of them got accepted. Two of them did not. Uh, and uh, But we have begun, and we will continue to go out to the communities where those are going to be. And they were going to say to them, here's the plan. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, you know, can we get your cooperation or can we at least get your toleration of this? So we're holding ourselves to that standard and we're holding these other developers to that same standard. You've got to go out to the community. You can't just show up one day with bulldozers. And <laughs> I don't think that's a bad system. To okay, well, you know, what you say sounds very reasonable um, and good for Hawaiian Electric, you know, for taking that position and dealing with it that way. But I, I still want to hear from Mitch and see what he <laughs> All <does>. right. <laughs> Mitch, go. I was on mute because I have a bunch of helicopter activity here, so I didn't want to like, drown you guys all out. So, yeah, I, I totally agree with uh, what Peter was saying. Uh, I have a little bit of experience. I had to, my geothermal project, uh, I had to go and present to the community in Pune. Um, they have a very vocal anti-geothermal uh, crowd there. Um, but, you know, we were, at the, um, we were at the community center and there were a lot of the silent majority showed up. And, you know, so we had a, kind of a balance. Um, the the anti-geothermal, there was a component in the anti-geothermal crowd. I mean, it doesn't matter what you say, like you're saying, Peter, it's just like, no way, the highway, we just don't want to do it. Whereas the community uh, itself, they asked good questions. They were interested in the project. Um, I think they all supported, in this case, it was a hydrogen project. They all supported it. And I think there was a lot of value in doing it. Um, I just wonder if 30 days is enough time. I mean, it seems like a pretty oh. short uh, time frame to be able to, A, get the people out there, then give them a chance to think about it. But nevertheless, uh, giving them the chance. Now, we, we, we saw, for example, in Waimanalo, uh, I guess there's competing opinions of what happened there, but they just, like you said, Peter, they just arrived with the bulldozers one day and started knocking down all these, you know, old growth trees. And boy, people just, you know, were really anti about that. Now, you could say that the lead up to that was not well done because, you know, the, the city's claiming, well, we had all these meetings for the last five years. Well, you may have had all those meetings for the last five years, but the word didn't get out and people were surprised. And so it's like no surprises. And you look up at the North Shore, I think a lot of people who are pro-wind were even surprised at how big those wind turbines were and how close they were to buildings. It was like, oh, we had no clue they were gonna be that big. And it's kind of hard if you're just using drawings and things like that to give a feeling of the, the size of these things until you're like standing right next to one and they're big. 
And uh, so they do have an impact. Uh, yeah. like I, I know, for example, some of the give and, uh, give and take is like up in the northern end of uh, Big Island. They have a wind farm up there. And one of the big complaints to the community was, well, they have these strobe lights. Now, when I bought this property, there were, there, were no, uh, there were no wind turbines there. And I bought it so I could look at the stars and all this kind of stuff. Now I've got all these strobe lights blaring off. And so they, they worked on a, a solution to that where the uh, strobe lights were only on when they when there was a, a aircraft was going to land at their little airport up there, and he could trigger a switch and switch on the strobe lights when he was close enough, and then they switched them off, and that worked. So there's a there's an example of the community working together with the developer to smooth it out and come up with a solution that everybody can live with. But like you said, Peter. There, there does have to be some kind of a willingness to get, do some give and take. Otherwise, what are we doing? I mean, like you said, you know, there's only so much land that's out of sight, out of mind. And at some point, it's going to start encroaching on the view planes and that of people. So you, you've got to make allowances for that. Peter? I would, first of all, I, uh, I, I want to point out that the uh, developers have 30 days to start their community outreach, not to finish. Uh, you're absolutely right. You can't do anything in 30 days, especially in this current environment where a lot of people are going to be thinking more about how they're feeding their families and how they're keeping them safe. It's not normal times. But we're saying to these developers, you have 30 days to start, and we'd like you to start even sooner. If you haven't started in 30 days, we're going to make the announcement and then you're going to catch some flack from the people who are going to say, well, how come the, you know, the developer themselves didn't come to me or didn't come to our community? So uh, it's 30 days to get started before we announce these plans ourselves. Uh, and it's going to be months uh, before these, these community outreach programs are, are completed. So that's absolutely right. And I agree with you, there, there's room for improvement. Uh, from well-meaning and from well-intentioned people who want to talk it over and say, how can we solve this is a problem for us? How can we solve this problem? And there's no doubt that, you know, we all hear about, oh, this is happening, that's happening. You know, they've been talking about repaving the street outside my house for years. When they finally did it, I was shocked. <laughs> Two reasons, because I didn't yeah. think they'd ever do it. And secondly, all of a sudden, there they were. And, you know, I'm all in favor of that repaving, but it happened to be somewhat inconvenient. And I, you know, that's the nature of, of human beings, I think. So well, it's, it's also Hawaii. We got to get out there and Hawaii, talk to people. We take our time sometimes, and it, it really puts yeah. the crunch on projects. I remember... Castle and Cook uh, once uh, gave a talk in uh, the Venture Capital Association on permitting, and they said their original project, which was quite large uh, out there in Mililani somewhere, it took 40 years, 40 years to get the project approved. We really can't afford that. Climate change is coming a lot sooner. And so, um, you know, I want to talk about, you know, if you were or we were a developer, one of these developers, what would you do to socialize the project? I mean, especially in these times of COVID, um, seems to me one of the things I would do is I would write them a note. I'd get contact to the community leaders. Uh, I'd write them a note. I'd, I'd network, you know, and, uh, and then I'd try to do, I'd try to do a, a Zoom meeting, let everybody have at it, um, take notes, even record the meeting. Um, and and I'd, um, I'd make this as, as good or better than a flesh and blood meeting because we have the technology and we can do that fairly quickly. And, um, and I think it's useful in many ways. One of my concerns is not only that people do that thing about never no way, my way or the highway kind of thing, with a never just sort of terroristic negotiation, with a never ever going to agree with you. But the other part, so I think, I'm sure you've had experience with this, is I agree. It's a good project. I'm with you. I support it. Okay. Six months later, I changed my mind. <laughs> and I really don't think that's fair. Anyway, your comment? Yeah. Well, I agree with you. And you've, you've kind of laid out exactly what the things that these developers uh, need to do and what Hawaiian Electric has done already with the projects that we were proposing. We had Zoom meetings uh, in which we you know, presented the information. We publicized those meetings. We have contacts and made contacts with 
uh, more contacts with the people in those communities, not just elected leaders, but community associations, neighborhood boards. Uh, you know, there's even ways to find out who the real leaders of a community are. They're not necessarily the elected leaders of a community, as you know. Uh, they might be religious leaders. They might be, uh, uh, you know, they might be Hawaiian activist leaders. There are leaders and people who are influencers in the community. And we do have social media now that allows us to, you know, get out to a lot of people and get that we didn't before. But uh, at the same time, I think, especially in Hawaii, the, I think the absence of face-to-face -face meetings is going to be make, making things a lot more difficult. You and I, Mitch, I mean, we're, we're not, we're content to do this, but, you know, we can't touch our noses, if you know what I mean. If, and, and in Hawaii, being able to touch the nose of the other person and um, give them a, a handshake, uh, the, you know, a, a Hawaiian-style handshake and stuff, those things go a long way, and then not just with Hawaiian, native Hawaiian people, but with all of us. Uh, you know, I think it makes things a lot more difficult. And um, so, as I said, it's going to be hard for some of these developers who have uh, very little experience and very little, you know, very small contacts here to do what needs to be done. But it does need to be done. And we need to be, uh, you know, we, we can't stop the, the naysayers. We can't stop, uh, we can't, you know, do very much about the people who are going to say no way. What we can do is make sure that on our side, we have done all the outreach we possibly can, that we have communicated directly and, you know, whether it's email or letter or whatever with the people and, and that we've offered them meetings and that we've held meetings. We, all we can do is make sure that our side of this equation is, is, is as perfect as it can be. And then when the, you know, when the intransigent ones come along, uh, you know, people will say, well, where did the, the, that guy, six months ago, that guy said it was okay. Now all of a sudden he's changing his mind. What's his problem? So all we can do is all we can do. All we can do is be the best possible um, communicators for this community mm -hmm. reach. And there's going to be more of it, you know, because uh, we're going to be, soon we're going to be uh, looking for uh, solar, community solar projects. And those are in many ways just like these other projects. And we're probably going to have Hawaiian electric self-build projects, and we're going to have other developers. So I think this, we're just trying very hard to make this the new normal. You cannot do a project in Hawaii without going through the effort, the very sincere effort of reaching out to the community, listening to their comments, and figuring out if there's anything you can do. But, you know, one of the problems in Hawaii is that things take a long time here, like the, like the Castle and Cook project I mentioned. Right. And, and um, we, we simply have to avoid an unnecessary delay uh, for this initiative. Uh, otherwise, we'll never make the target and things, you know, the Red Sea will, will fall in on us after a while. Um, yeah. So I guess my question is, uh, how do you see the timing on these 16 projects? Of course, um, you know, developers have the opportunity to try to socialize. But when do you when do you draw the line? Also, you mentioned, and I'm talking about timing. Also, you mentioned that uh, you know Hawaiian Electric wants to expedite its process. Uh, uh, Jenny Potter, uh, one of the three commissioners, has said that. Uh, she said that at the uh, January um, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum legislative briefing. She said that on our show two weeks ago, and I'm sure that Jay Griffin. Uh, who is uh, coming on our show a uh, week after next is going to say the same thing. But so is this going to work? Is this going to happen? Are we really going to be faster now, even with all the challenges of COVID? I think we are. Uh, I think to some extent, some of the, some of the process gets, can get faster with this kind of technology. You don't have to drive across town to have a meeting. You don't have to uh, you know, put a put a, an application in the mail, you can press a button and it's there. Uh, we had uh, meetings with the Public Utilities Commission and the solar contractors, and we looked very carefully at our processes and we came up with three steps, which we believe will make things move faster. If you want to put a solar uh, array on your home right now and it's under 25 kilowatts and it has the right protective equipment, you don't have to wait for an approval. You can go ahead and, and energize it as soon as it's constructed, as long as you have your city building permit, which can be a delay, no question. But from our part, we've got out of the, gotten out of the way of that. It used to be that we would, uh, if somebody was going to put in a, uh, a certain kind of system, 
we waited till there was a final approval and then we began the process of changing the meter. Well, now we're gonna move that up. And as soon as there's a conditional approval, uh, we're gonna start our process to get that meter changed. So the meter is out there uh, much earlier in the process and the person can energize their system. And finally, this is all pretty technical stuff, but we're, you know, we're allowing contractors to put in a temporary meter uh, that, so the customer can energize their system. When we get our an opportunity with our other workload, we'll get there, we'll put in what we call a permanent revenue meter. And so uh, we're trying to get out of the way of that part. And we think it'll reduce uh, the time, uh, which has been about six months, uh, five to six months down, uh, take about two months off of it. And part of this is, be, is to be able, because we can do a lot of stuff electronically, but physically we still have to get out there and change the meter. Right, right, right. So I, Mitch, I what do you think of all this? There is are ways to do that. Is this going to work? Unmute. Yeah, I was on mute again because we had a, a, an Osprey. Boy, those things are noisy. So yeah, I think that'll work. I mean, that, that, that's all good stuff uh, to try and uh, look at your systems and make sure that you're being as efficient as you can and, and moving forward. And I think that was always one of the complaints that I hear a lot was that it takes, you know, both the permitting guys and the utility so long to do it. So this is, this is really uh, being responsive. And I, I think on the other side too is, you know, we have more incentive to get the even more incentive to get these things done because we need to generate employment for people. So it's not like you have the luxury now of just sitting back and loafing around and oh man, yeah, it'll happen. I mean, people need to work, and our our uh, solar industry needs to get out there, and and they're, they're they they employ a lot of people, and so that'll help everybody. And of course, they spend their money in the community, so it's all going to flow down. So that's yeah. what you call shovel ready. Like, let's make sure we can really go. And yeah. uh, it would be interesting to have a similar kind of a meeting with the permitting guys. I'm, you know, I'm just throwing this out as an idea is that the Hawaiian Electric could go and talk to the city and say, look, guys, you know, you're taking way too long to do this, if that's the case, and work with them and, and show them how you might be able to uh, shorten their process down. One thing we looked at, I've said before, is having a third party um engineering firm uh do all the grunt work of you know looking at the drawings validating the drawings so that then they can just tell the the permitting guy in the city that hey we've checked all the drawings everything is the code you can go ahead and approve this and uh, so you have several guys working in parallel and not serially and, and get it done so that Great would be idea. a good conversation because you know you i mean hawaiian electric has a lot of uh a lot of expertise in this kind of stuff and uh, you know you're you're a big company, and so you have a lot of influence on how this works. So maybe even talk to the mayor, and then have a yeah. meeting of the minds. You guys have a brainstorming meeting, and you're sitting there, and, and have the solar industry there as well, and say, "Come on, guys, let let's solve this permitting thing." I mean, everybody complains about permitting in this in this state, and uh, it's time to get off the pot and do something about it. And the first step is to talk about it with the people involved. And, find out what their problems are. Like Good point, you know? good suggestion. And, and we hadn't talked about it before, but the idea is these projects, these 16 projects are gonna yield a number of jobs. And this exactly. is an essential activity. There'll be uh, all kinds of capital flowing in, uh, all kinds of jobs flowing out, very valuable to the community and should be persuasive to people who care about restarting the economy. Uh, and all this in the context, Peter, of um, you know getting on with it, doing it despite COVID, um, you know, making our new normal work for, for energy. So we, we were out of time, but I wonder if you could uh, give some parting thoughts, what you would like people to take away from the program. Well, what I'd like people to take away is that you may be hearing about a, pro a project in your neighborhood or in your, on your island, uh, maybe for just a bunch of, of uh, what looks like a bunch of, of massive containers and that's the standalone storage or it may be a solar which you know is not wind so it doesn't stick up in the air in the same way uh and you know we invite you to find out all you can about it don't assume anything about it find out the facts look at it think about what it will mean to you and if you have some 
constructive criticism, we want to hear about it. We don't believe for a second that all of these developers' ideas are just automatically perfect. But at the end of the day, recognize, as you've said, Jay, and as so many people have said, if we're going to solve global climate change, we're all going to have to have some different experiences of what we what we look at in our neighborhood, whether it's a solar array or or an energy storage facility, or or you know we're not looking at any new wind uh, facilities at the moment, but uh, and probably will not in the future. But uh, you know there's a possibility we could have offshore wind before too long, and most of it will be way out where you can't see it. But you know you go out in your boat, and all of a sudden you can't see it, and if that's going to uh, you know, we can't allow that to throw a wrench in the, in the works. Be open-minded, be fair, be constructive, uh, find out all you can, and then, you know, come and talk to us. We're, we are all, we all, we all want the same, you know, good things for Hawaii. And uh, so I don't think there's, it needs to be a, a terrifically adversarial process. That's one of the problems. With, mm -hmm. But the, mind, the mindset should be, of course, you have to take care of your own interests, but at the same time, you should have another hand on for the community. You should right. care about the community. We, how we've can had we that, this, and we have to focus on that. Yeah, not how can we stop this, but how can we get this done in a, in a fair, and honest, and, and useful yeah. way? I think that's got to be the attitude on a lot of things, not just energy, but food, uh, you know, housing. Uh, mm -hmm. got, uh, we need we used Public to have health. I think, more of that here in Hawaii, and now we we don't have so much, just like the rest of the country. We got to get back to that. Let, you know, let's let's see how we can make it work, not how. Mm -hmm. we can it. Yeah. Right. Okay, Mitch. This is uh, we're way over, but then that's not unusual. Uh, so maybe you could make a little summary about what we learned here today. I love when I ask you this. You know. <laughs> well, it's a dirty oh. trick. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Well, we heard a lot of good news from Hawaiian Electric and what they're doing to, you know, meet their goals. Uh, they're keeping the focus despite the, you know, the COVID uh, pandemic that's affecting us all. Uh, I might add, too, just by way, you know, the lights are still on, my computer still works, I can still work at home. So thank you very much for doing that. I think uh, we're going to have, a, you know, uh, <clears throat> we have to change our processes. And uh, especially when 16 big projects hit all at once, we're going to have to get our streamline our processes. And I think that uh, this is a great incentive, the fact that we need jobs, we need to get people back to work. Let's put all the aggro aside and let's work for the common good so that everybody wins out of this thing. Because, you know, that money comes in and it flows down and it flows down to everybody. It's not just sitting in one big pot. So everybody wins here. It's got to be a win, win, win situation so thank you peter thank, thank you mitch, mitch. thank you it. peter thank and you, when Jay. we're all sitting around watching our late night movies we have to remember who makes that possible thank exactly. you hawaiian electric <laughs> <laughs> thank you i appreciate it got a lot of people out there working to make that happen for you <laughs> aloha. aloha you guys talk aloha. soon aloha.